that dinosaur discovery. The scientific world is still reeling from the discovery of actual Tyrannosaurus rex cells and soft tissue unearthed last week at a Montana excavation site. It's a tremendous find that scientists say could unlock the mysteries of extinction and could one day lead to real-life dinosaur cloning. Well, maybe. Well, North Carolina State University professor Mary Schweitzer is the leader of the discovery team that found these extraordinary specimens. She joins us now from Raleigh with more. Nice to see you, Professor. Thank you for having me. So tell us, how significant a discovery is this? Well, it has the potential to be very significant, but for right now, until we do further analyses, I think um, all we can say is it's really cool. <laughs> Well, Professor, as I understand it, this, this was sort of an accidental discovery. You had to, to split one of the bones in half because it was simply too big to get into a helicopter. And in splitting the bone, you suddenly realized you had this soft tissue on your hands. Is that correct? Well, it wasn't quite that sudden. He, um, they had to split the bone in the field, as was reported. And when it got back to the lab and um, Carrie Ansel began preparing it, she reserved some of the fragments for chemical analyses, and so it was treated slightly different than most dinosaur bone is in the field. Is that amazing to find this kind of soft tissue in a fossil this old? And what can the soft tissue really tell us? Um, well, it is, it is it's very amazing. It's uh, utterly shocking, actually, because it flies in the face of everything that we understand about how tissues and cells degrade. Uh, it's not something that any one of us could ever predict or hope for. Um, and I, I think that it's important to remember that we we don't know for sure what it still is. It looks like blood vessels, and it looks like um, bone matrix, and it certainly looks like cells, and it acts like cells. But we haven't done the chemical analysis that let us say what it is for sure. Professor, I, a word uh, comes to us that uh, the capillary structure or something that you've observed is actually very similar to that of an ostrich. And I'm wondering, is this uh, add fuel to the, the idea that uh, the dinosaurs and birds were in fact related? Well, um, uh, potentially, yes. Realize that the blood vessels in, in your bone look just exactly the same as well. Vessels um, at the level that we reported in the paper all kind of look the same. It's the molecular constituents that differ from one animal to another or from animals to humans. So the potential is there to, to really tell some differences, but for right now, that's not something that we can address. How big a T-Rex are we talking about here, Professor? Uh, this one was quite a small T-Rex relative to, say, Sue that's on display in Chicago. It's, um, it was significantly smaller, but it was also significantly older. And if I'm remembering what Jack told me correctly, it is the first appearance of Tyrannosaurus rex. It's so, therefore, it's the geo geologically, it's the oldest T-Rex on record. Would it have wanted to eat us? Mary, was oh, it a carnivore? You know, probably. <laughs> that would be my guess. Now, is it possible to clone from this kind of tissue? Are we looking at it? I mean, we're, Ron and I were sort of making fun here of a real-life Jurassic Park, but is that possible? No. I, I think uh, every, all of the obstacles that stand in the way between us and cloning a dinosaur, getting the, getting the DNA from the dinosaur is actually probably going to be the easiest, and that's not something we're anywhere close to doing. So once, once you get the DNA, it will be fragmented and, and chewed up into little tiny pieces. And so you'd have to figure out how to put all those pieces together. And then you'd have to figure out exactly what order to put them in. Then you'd have to figure out how many chromosomes that dinosaur had and make sure that all of the genes are arranged correctly on the chromosomes. And that's just for starters. Well, you've anticipated my next question. And <laughs> it, let's assume that you can do all of that sort of thing. What might you learn from dinosaur DNA? Well, you know, I think it's, it's really exciting to learn things like, um, I, you guys have probably heard of the idea of molecular clocks, which is a, a way of taking particular fragments of DNA and comparing them across taxa to get an idea of how quickly uh, DNA might mutate or change. Now we have the opportunity to do that with something that's actually anchored in the fossil record. So that's one potential really exciting thing that might come of this. And one of the exciting things about this discovery, correct me if I'm wrong, is the fact that this stuff was fossilized as it was. At 70 million years old, you don't expect to find soft tissue, do you? Not at all. No. It's, it was utterly shocking. So you have to sort of rewrite the book as far as fossilization goes, I, I assume. Well, that's, that's the exciting part for me. I've always been very intrigued by how, uh, how things change in going from a living being to part of the rock record. And... Um, like I said, a lot of our science doesn't allow for this. All of the chemistry and all of the molecular breakdown experiments that we've done don't allow for this. So if this material turns out to be actual remnants of the dinosaur, 
then yes, I think we will have to do some, um, certainly rethinking of some of the basics of the model of fossilization. You know, well, Mary, Mary, when I was reading about this story, I was amazed that in some of the capillaries, when you went to, to pull them, they snapped right back. Are you amazed at the quality of these remains? Absolutely. 70 I, million years old, huh? It's, it's just doesn't seem possible. But yes, you can actually take the vessels and they, they do have internal components and so you can take a probe and kind of squeeze those things out into solution and, and the, the vessels are fine. It's just, I, I can't explain it to be honest. I very cool. Well, Professor Mary Schweitzer, congratulations and thank you very much for stopping by. Thank you so much.